Hi everyone, I'm Hiria Skamoto, a fifth year PhD student at Caltech. My advisor is Professor Sunjo Chang at Caltech, and the tutorial paper and most of my work in LISO are performed with the assistance and guidance of Professor Chang and Professor Slotin at MIT. The tutorial paper for this uh, CDC tutorial session is also published with the great help from Professor Chu Chu Fang at MIT. In this talk, I will introduce the concept of a neural contraction metric, which provides one way to guarantee stability and robustness of existing learning based control frameworks. Systems and control theory have been used for providing formal mathematical guarantees for various control systems. Contraction theory, which we focus on in this talk, is for formally studying incremental stability and robustness of general nonlinear systems. On the other hand, machine learning technologies, including neural networks, can be considered as a promising solution to large scale and complex control problems, which have been challenging to be solved with traditional control techniques. The purpose of our study is to combine these two to provide much needed safety, stability, and robustness guarantees for existing learning based control frameworks using contraction theory. Let me briefly review the concept of contraction theory with a simple example. For a nonlinear system given as equation 1, or for its differential dynamics as in the calculus of variation given as equation 2, we could define a general differential Lyapunov-like function with a positive definite matrix M, which is quadratic in the differential state delta x. The Lyapunov stability condition is then given as this matrix inequality condition called a contraction condition. One conceptual difference of contraction theory from Lyapunov theory is that it uses a differential state for its quadratic Lyapunov function. This means that if we consider any trajectories of the contracting nonlinear system satisfying the contraction condition, they, the, these two trajectories converge to one single trajectory regardless of their initial state. And again, since any trajectory of the nonlinear system converges to one single trajectory as long as it satisfies the contraction condition, such stability is called incremental stability and the positive definite matrix M defines a contraction metric. Let's see the difference between incremental stability and conventional stability in a very simple example. As you can see, this scalar system is clearly contracting in an identity metric M equals to one, or I, because it satisfies the contraction condition with alpha equals to one. However, its analytical solution is diverging as T goes to infinity, which implies that the system is not stable with respect to any fixed point. We will see that such conceptual difference of contraction theory from Lyapunov theory is useful in systematic stability and robustness analysis of learning-based control. Let us start from reviewing the basic properties, properties of contraction theory. Contraction theory uses the uses a differential Lyapunov function that is always a quadratic function of the differential state delta x defined by a contraction metric and its uniformly positive definite matrix M, unlike Lyapunov theory where B could be any function of the state x. It expresses a Lyapunov stability condition using the simple quadratic Lyapunov function, thereby capitalizing the necessary and sufficient condition for incremental exponential convergence of the multiple nonlinear system trajectories to one single trajectory. The differential nature of contraction theory implies we can exploit linear system type techniques for nonlinear stability analysis and control and estimation synthesis. Contraction theory simplifies conventional stability analysis by its extensive use of exponential stability along with the comparison lemma, as in linear systems where we cannot distinguish exponential stability from asymptotic stability. Therefore, incremental exponential stability naturally holds for non autonomous nonlinear systems without any additional modifications unlike Lyapunov techniques. 
Also, the use of exponential stability as in linear systems results in intuitive proofs on input to state stability and finite gain LP stability, both for autonomous and non autonomous nonlinear systems, without using uniform asymptotic stability, which makes stability analysis much more involved than necessary. For example, in reactant theory, the problem of finding a reactant function with the smallest L2 gain reduces to solving a PDE called the hamilton jacobian inequality. In contrast, in contraction theory, the problem could be solved with a linear matrix inequality constraint, as in the KYP lemma in LTB systems theory. Another notable feature is modularity, which preserves contraction through parallel, feedback, and hierarchical combinations, and so on, expanding the results given in the passivity formalism of reactant theory. In summary, contraction theory studies incremental stability using a contraction metric and pure differential coordinate change. Also, we often parameterize the system state x by the parameter mu from 0 to 1. For the sake of proving incremental stability of any two system trajectories xi0 and xi1. When we use this parameterization, there are several Ryapnov like functions we could use, such as the differential Ryapnov function, the transformed square length integrated over two arbitrary solutions, and the path integral with the coordinate transformation theta. After some algebra, the Lyapunov stability condition with these quadratic Lyapunov functions results in this matrix inequality condition, called a contraction condition, in terms of the matrix function M that defines a contraction metric. Note that for any two solution trajectories xi0 and xi1, we have this relation, which means that any couple of the solution trajectories converges to one single trajectory regardless of the initial state, as long as the Lyapunov functions are exponentially converging to zero. Such incremental stability analysis, which is distinct from the conven conventional stability analysis with respect to a fixed point or an invariant set, is useful for analyzing robustness of nonlinear systems. Let's consider nonlinear systems perturbed by bounded external disturbance D. Now let the two solutions for incremental stability be a solution with and without the external disturbance. If the unperturbed system satisfies the contraction condition and the contraction metric is bounded, then the distance between the perturbed and unperturbed trajectories is exponentially bounded and converges to a ball with a radius linear in the upper bound of the external disturbance. Let us see that the disturbance term in the previous robust contraction theorem can be viewed as a learning error term in several learning based control problems, as detailed in the paper at the bottom. Let us consider the problem of system identification as an example, where f true is an unknown nonlinear function to be modeled by a contracting learned model FL. We can always decompose the system into a contracting part and a learning error part, and the latter part can be regarded as external disturbance. The robust contraction theorem then guarantees that the distance between the trajectories of the learned model and unknown system model is exponentially bounded. As a quick summary, contraction theory is useful in the sense that it enables analyzing incremental stability and robustness using this contraction constraint, thereby providing explicit tracking error bounds for various learning based control problems as implied in the previous example. However, all the results presented so far assume the existence of a contraction metric, which is challenging to find for general nonlinear systems. So the first part of the rest of our presentation covers a convex optimization approach called CV stem for designing a contraction metric. We now consider a control affine nonlinear system with bounded external disturbance or with stochastic disturbance expressed as, uh, as the Gaussian, Gaussian white noise, where XEUD represents a target trajectory. We design the controller U as in the linear quadratic regulator with the Riccati inequality-like contraction constraint, equation 2. Please note that the nonlinearity is captured through the nonlinear matrix function A, 
in order to allow the linear systems type analysis even for such a nonlinear problem setting. The parameter beta is added in the contraction condition just to account for the stochastic perturbation. Anyway, what's important here is not the mathematical details, but that the contraction constraint again enables guaranteeing that the distance between the target trajectory xd and the control trajectory x is uh, exponentially bounded like this for deterministic, deterministic systems and like this for stochastic systems. Therefore, uh, both for deterministic and stochastic systems, the steady state upper bound of the tracking error can be given as a function of the condition number of the matrix function M that defines the contraction metric. The method of CB stem is for finding the contraction metric M that minimizes this term plus the penalty term for excessive control effort. Here's a problem we are interested in. But we can see that this problem is nonlinear, which means that it is difficult to find its global solution. It turns out that contraction theory possesses useful convex properties after some modifications. First, we use W, the inverse of the positive definite matrix M, as a decision variable. Multiplying the constraints by W, we get these matrix inequalities. Second, we introduce chi, which is the condition number of m, nu, which is the supremum of the largest eigenvalue of m, and bar w, which is just w multiplied by nu. These new variables allow us to express the nonlinear contraction constraints as convex constraints. Also, the objective function can be expressed as an affine function in terms of the new variables. As a result, we have this optimization problem for finding an optimal contraction metric where the contraction constraint and the objective function are now all convex. Since the differential dynamics used in contraction theory can be viewed as a linear time varying system, we have a similar control and estimation duality even for such a non-linear problem setting. We can utilize such duality to design a state estimation counterpart of the CV stem control. Now we have a convex optimization based scheme of designing a contraction metric and also the LMI contraction constraint can be interpreted using the KYP lemma in the LTB system theory. But solving the optimization at each time instant could still be unrealistic for systems with limited computational capacity. This is how we came up with the idea of a neural contraction metric. Instead of solving the optimization in real time, we sample training data for the optimal contraction metric offline using the convex optimization approach and then model it by a neural network. The training details can be found in the paper at the bottom. In the online phase, given the current state, time, and desired trajectory, we can get a control input just by evaluating the NCM neural network, which is much computationally cheaper than solving a convex optimization. As I briefly mentioned earlier, this method works also for estimation and motion planning. The NCM method models the training samples given by the optimization as in imitation learning, but we could instead directly use the contraction constraint in the loss function of the neural network training. Let us recall that the contraction condition can be expressed like this as in the Atmov theory, which results in this matrix inequality. Since this constraint is a function of the contraction metric M and the contracting controller U, where X D U D is the target trajectory, we train the two neural networks using the contraction constraint violation term in the neural net loss function, penalizing the non-positive definiteness of the constraint. It is also shown in the paper at the bottom that the proposed learning-based control technique outperforms the existing techniques, including sum of squares, MPC and reinforcement learning in terms of the tracking error performance for tasks such as code rotor control problems and segue and cut pole balancing problems. As emphasized at the beginning, the major advantage of contraction theory is that we have the stability and robustness guarantee even for these learning based control schemes. We again consider a nonlinear feedback control program where the stabilizing controller U star is designed to make the system contracting using the convex optimization approach, CV stem, but computationally expensive as it has to solve 
optimization at each time instead. Therefore, we approximate U star by a neural network using the neural contraction metric approach for the sake of its real time implementation. If we apply the DNCM control to the system, we can always decompose it into the contracting system part and the learning error part. We can then view the learning error part as external disturbance to apply contraction theory. As we saw earlier, the robust contraction theorem guarantees the distance between the target trajectory xd and the trajectory with a computationally cheap NCM control to be exponentially bounded as desired. Again, these frameworks for constructing a contraction metric using a neural network work also for state estimation and motion planning problems, and contraction theory provides similar stability and robustness guarantees. Also, they can deal with other types of disturbances such as parametric uncertainty, and these extensions can be found in the papers at the bottom. In summary, the major advantage of using contraction theory for learning-based and data-driven control is that by regarding its internal learning error as an external disturbance, we can formally ensure the distance between the target and learned trajectories to be bounded exponentially with time, with its steady state upper bound proportional to the learning error. We can find a contraction metric by convex optimization for the sake of such useful guarantees, and we could use a neural network to model the, the optimal contraction metric for its real-time implementation. And again, thanks to the use of contraction theory, the NCM-based control, estimation, and motion planning schemes still possess the superior robustness guarantee by viewing the NCM learning error as an external disturbance as detailed in the paper at the bottom. Thank you for your attention. Most of the materials I talked about today can be found in these two tutorial papers.